Now we've talked about addition, subtraction, and multiplication of fractions. We'll talk about division of fractions, but let's talk about it as a broader issue of what are called compound fractions. And compound fractions are based on the following useful relationship. The quotient a divided by b is the same as the fraction a b. And what that means is that any time you have a fraction, you can treat it as a division problem, and any time you have a division problem, you can treat it as a fraction. So, for example, we want to write as a fraction 157 divided by 47. By our theorem, 157 divided by 47 is 157 47 Yeah, that isn't too exciting, but it has some important implications because we already know how to do a bunch of things with fractions. So let's talk about division. It's possible that at some point you may have learned a way to divide fractions. To divide a fraction, invert and multiply. Do yourself a favor and forget this method. Instead, we can divide with fractions by using what are called compound fractions. If the dividend or divisor is a fraction, we get a compound fraction. For example, 2 thirds divided by 5 well, our theorem says that a divided by b is the fraction a b. That's a fraction with a as the numerator and b as the denominator. So 2 thirds divided by 5 is 2 thirds fifths. Or 3 fourths divided by 2 fifths. Well, that's a fraction with numerator 3 fourths and denominator 2 fifths. 8 divided by 1 fifth. Well, that's a fraction with numerator 8 and denominator 1 fifth. Note that sometimes we use a slash to save space. So 2 thirds divided by 5 could be written as a fraction 2 slash 3 over 5. 3 fourths divided by 2 fifths, that's 3 slash 4 over 2 slash 5. 8 divided by 1 fifth, that's 8 over 1 slash 5. And while we could do this, it's generally not a good idea. And the thing to remember is that paper is cheap. Don't try to save paper at the cost of understanding. Especially because the amount of space we've saved in using the slash is almost nothing in comparison to the amount of space we would have used if we wrote the fractions out in full. So how do you simplify these compound fractions? When confronted with a compound fraction, it's helpful to keep the following ideas in mind. For any fraction, if we multiply by the denominator, we'll get just the numerator. Second, for any fraction a over b and any non-zero number n, the fraction a over b is the same as the fraction na over nb. We can multiply numerator and denominator by the same thing and not change the fraction. For example, let's say we want to find 2 thirds divided by 5. So the first thing to remember is that a division gives us a compound fraction. So let's rewrite this division as a fraction. Now our numerator is a fraction with a denominator of 3, and we can get rid of that denominator by multiplying by it. So let's multiply the numerator by 3. But we can't just alter the numerator, we have to alter the denominator as well, so we also need to multiply the denominator by 3. Now we can carry out the multiplication. In the numerator, 2 thirds times 3 is 2, and 5 times 3 is 15, which gives us our final answer, 2 fifteenths. How about 3 fourths divided by 2 fifths? Well, again, we know that a division can be rewritten as a fraction. To get rid of this denominator 4 in the numerator, we'll multiply numerator by 4. But we also have to multiply denominator by 4. 
In the numerator, 3 fourths times 4 is. In the denominator, 2 fifths times 4 is. Now we still have a fraction in the denominator, so let's multiply the denominator by 5. We also have to multiply the numerator by 5. Multiplying our denominator 8 fifths by 5 gives us. Multiplying our numerator 3 by 5 gives us. And we have our final answer, 15 eighths. 8 divided by 1 fifth, well that's the same as the fraction 8 over 1 fifth. And we can get rid of our fraction in the denominator by multiplying numerator and denominator by 5. Multiplying our numerator together gives us 40. Multiplying our denominator together gives us 1. And 40 once is just equal to 40. Who says the dividend or divisor have to be single fractions? Compound fractions also include expressions like 3 over 5 plus 1 seventh or 5 thirds plus 1 half over 2 fifths plus 3 sevenths. And these may look a little frightening, but the key to life is you control the step size. What does that mean? Well, let's consider a fraction like 3 over 5 plus 1 seventh. So the first thing to recognize here is that we have this fraction 1 seventh with denominator 7. So if we multiply numerator and denominator of our compound fraction by 7, we have a chance of getting rid of the 7. So I'll multiply my numerator together, 3 times 7 is 21, and our denominator will use the distributive property, that's 5 times 7 plus 1 seventh times 7. Well, 5 times 7 is 35, 1 seventh times 7 is 1, so our denominator, 35 plus 1, that's 36, and since I have lots of free time in my hands and nothing more important to do, I'll reduce this fraction 2136. And even though I have so much free time that I'm going to reduce fractions, I'd like to do this at least somewhat efficiently. So let's start off with 21. That factors as 3 times 7. And so the only question I really care about is whether 3 or 7 is a factor of 36. Now 7 is not a factor of 36, but 3 is. 36 is 3 times 12. And now we can remove that common factor and get our final answer, 7 twelfths.